how does UBA works in QReader and what's the benefit that it brings? Well, let me start by showing the actual UBA rules that make the bulk of the basic product. There's going to be a separate video on the machine learning one. And here we can classify those rules. Uh, so, for example, if we look at the access and authentication ones, here's the, the 20 that make that group. Uh, this thing is a reference set. So, for example, uh, if you have executives, uh, UBA doesn't know which your executives are, so you need to specify that. Same thing with your critical access. Uh, other tables uh, are sort of explanatory. But as you can see, this rule has a value here, actually I changed this, uh, of risk. Risk that gets added to a user that incurs into this problematic behavior selected in here. Let's actually take a look at the actual rule. And I'm going to use the standard rule editor to show you the details and you um, my point is not here to show the how this uh, logic of this work it can be easily understood but uh, the point that I'm trying to make here is that this rule contrary to most rules in QReader they don't fire an offense notice that this thing is on check here so if you say well what is the the benefit of a rule if it doesn't fire an offense well, ah and the thing you can see it here on the event description with this thing here say sense value equals five which means that when this rule fires and actually change it in here uh, you can you will be adding five ten points whatever you have set up in here of risk to a particular user so and that same thing with with all the other rules so what happens when a risk accumulates uh, too much on a, on a particular user. There is a s settings, if you click on the uh, gear for setting, there are two parameters that you need to set in your curator. And I have mine set up very high, which is the risk threshold. That means, and that can be actually, by the way, static or dynamic if you have a business model in which your risk varies with the season and all that. So but basically, this parameter will specify, let's say I, I change this instead of uh, 100, I'm going to put this 5. Uh, well, this is telling me right there in my system, well, if you do that, Jose, from the current offenses that you have, you're going to have 49 uh, cases in which the risk value is going to be above 5. So, well, maybe 5 is not a good deal. And maybe I put 10 and, and, and oops, uh, maybe you put 10 and and, 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 and with 10 the, the system comes back and tells me, you know, actually do it in here with 20 and still 49. So, let's say I go to 100. So you get the point, and more on the, on the tuning of this later, right? And, and this is zero. So you will be after the system is has learned for let's say 15 days to a month, uh, and you have enabled the right rules, then you need to see what the normal threshold it is for normal people. And then you want to set that threshold. And also the other factor that you need to specify is the decay factor. And here is kind of a, by default is way too big. It's a 50%. So the risk accumulated in one hour will decrease by half every hour. And that's probably way too much. So you you want to play with with those parameters, right? And uh, you can have this button in here and say, well, for now until I have my system tuned, I don't want to be firing offenses because I actually want to tune it. So you you will pass that uh, switch uh, right there, right? So. What you get when you do this, uh, let's say that you are investigating a particular user because it surpassed the risk threshold and offense fire inviting you to investigate him, or you find him in other offenses and you want to see what is it that the guy was actually doing. So let's say that you find a user called B. Arnold. Let's say, yep, yeah, that's the one, Ben Arnold, and when you click in it, because this tool synchronizes with your Active Directory, it gets all the data from AD, and this is a physical security guy, so maybe a bodyguard, 
with a gun and such. And um, this guy did some problematic thing, and we can actually see the use cases. And, and normally, when you have this plane all alone, you get more data here. But uh, this is the only thing that I had fired for Ben Arnold. And we see three things. I say, well, what are the things that the guy's been doing? Well, what is it that has to do with go to an educational website? And we can actually see the actual logs from Curator right here. And we see that he went to WikiHow and say, yes, filtering data without getting caught. Well, not a very good thing. Again, this is not a cybersecurity guy, but a physical security one. Access from a prohibited location. What is this that he went to? We, you can actually go into any one of these sites. Let's actually try this one. These are from the proxy logs. And he went to a Tor project. And if you click on this one, actually, that's the same site. And he downloaded the the Tor browser. So he learned how to exfiltrate data without getting caught, but a little too late for, for this particular fellow. So the idea is to, instead of going into the standard curator uh, logs and look for things, you, you have something that keeps adding risk, the risk decays over time, and then when somebody becomes problematic uh, because of the amount of risk he or she has uh, accumulated, an offense will fire inviting you to look for that individual. And if you have What's an advisor installing here? When you click on this button, you get that advisor scrubs your curator system and search, you know, what you have in there, what's, what IOCs are, have any relationship with all the things out there and gives you, you know, a very detailed uh, information about what is it that Mr. Ben Arnold has been touching or playing with. If we want to see that information in a more easy to consume format, when we click into the graph, this is what we see. Again, the blue is things that are not necessarily, they are actually not in the actual offense, but they are related. One or two degrees of separation with a level of toxicity and relevance that makes it worthwhile to know that these things are related. And uh, this in, in gray, we see the actual information. In fact, we can go here on the left and filter what is it that we want to uh, actually show. Uh, so in gray is the data that has been found on the actual logs and offenses uh, in, in your system. That's actually very nice. The blue is that those IOCs are related, but not part of the data that is in curator itself and the green is okay we actually went inside and looked from all those blue IOCs and all the stuff of us and offense what else what other offenses what other data might be there and it finds that there are two offenses that are also related with what Ben Arnold did and if you want to answer the question, well, what log sources do I need to make this work? So if we look here into, I'm going to take just user authentication. I'm going to go here on on that rule in particular. And uh, this is the, the information that is in there. If we click here, we see the documentation about that one. And if we look in here, boy, look at all these log sources. So let's say that I have uh, Okta as a, my log source in here. So if I do, let me see if I know how to exp spell that. Maybe it's like that. Yeah. Actually, it is right there. So it's very easy to see what kind of benefit you may get with just the plain vanilla uh, UBA. One more thing. You, you probably know that in the video description of all my videos, there's a link to a public box folder that has the latest version of this document, which has all the uh, videos I have done on Curator. They are, are dated and have the links, so it's a lot easier to find them here. And if we go into UBA, uh, you can actually scroll down or you can simply do Control F. Let me actually do it and look for UBA. And you find all the inputs on uh, actual UBA, well that's actually the URL, that's not what I'm looking, but it's a section on UBA itself. So
some videos that I find particularly interesting are these two that I did with Bruno Silva, who, who's one of the things that he does uh, for a living is tune Q radars, the UBA system for customers. And I sat down with him over the WebEx and he actually gave me his tips and how he, he goes around uh, getting the plain vanilla Q radar up and ready. <laughs> 